Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss about the importance of a reactive power. Up to now, we discussed about the, the relation between the power factor and the armature current and how it varies. But here, the most important thing is the reactive power. Generally, to understand the reactive power, the reactive power is completely linked with the voltage and completely linked with the excitation completely linked with the excitation two things are important here for, for example just assume we have the resultant field is combination of main field plus armature field this is the resultant field that should be the constant that should be the constant for example this is the 10 milliweber generally the flux units are the 10 milliweber so we should discuss for different different excitations how it varies first condition for normal excitation so for example if we are using for the that 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 machine if you are using the normal excitation then the main field is 10 amps assume that main field current is 10 amps then the resultant flux is only we have the 10 milliweber so in the normal excitation there is no armature flux that should be the zero so it will give the 10 milliweber only 10 milliweber flux only so then the reactive power will become the zero reactive power will become the zero for example it is operated for the under excited under excited under excited means it's required the more flux here the main field is 5 amps is enough 5 amps for example under excited means main field is the low low value here normal excited means main field is the 10 amps for under excited main field is 5 amps then the resultant flux is 5 milliweber will be added and the it require 5 milliweber 5 milliweber flux from the excitation and it have 10 milliweber then the reactive power here the reactive power condition is absorbed condition reactive power is absorbed here the machine should absorb the reactive power next the third condition is over excited machine the over excited machine for example main field is main field current is more that is now 15 amps then the resultant field is 15 milliwebers are available and we require only 10 10 milliwebers that's why it will lose the 5 milliwebers of flux then it will have 10 milliwebers over as resultant flux then the reactive power is delivered here the reactive power is delivered here so just observe here for normal excitation the resultant flux is normal excitation zero it will have the zero weapons for under excitation it will take the field it will it will take the field from the another machine so that's why we can call it as reactive power is absorbed for over excitation the main field itself the high value then the it should lose because it's required only 10 milliweber it should lose it, it require only 10 milliweber then here q should be delivered q should be delivered next the role of reactive power is to maintain the air gap flux so the main important of the reactive power is main intention is so air gap flux should be maintained air gap flux should maintain so when air gap flux is constant then the system will have the proper work otherwise it doesn't have the any proper work next all single excited machines like induction motor induction generator are said to be under excitation so all induction cases induction motor or induction 
generator or called as under excited machines these are called as the under excited machines so whenever it is in under excited condition it is always absorb the reactive power so in this condition reactive power is absorbed okay and whenever the reactive power is absorbed the it causes magnetization it will take the magnetization so reactive power taken means it will take the flux okay magnetization to produce the required air gap flux to maintain the constant so magnetization means it will take the reactive power and it will maintain the flux next so the reactive power is normally called magnetizing power so another name of the reactive power is magnetizing power why it is called the magnetizing power because the reactive power because the reactive power itself maintain the magnetic flux right but in doubly excited machines doubly excited machines not only magnetization but also demagnetization also done doubly excited machines means doubly excited itself it will have more excitation that means flux is high so it should release the flux it should release the flux so demagnetization also done here demagnetization also done here so that means it will lose its flux then it will given to the then it will given to that machine so this is the importance of the reactive power this is called the importance of the reactive power next we will discuss effect of change in excitation under no load condition effect of change in excitation under no load condition so here under no load condition means there is no load means load angle is approximately zero and you know the relation between mm, no load emf and terminal voltage is v plus j into ia xs okay then we have the reactive power formula reactive power equal to v by xs e cos del minus v this is the reactive power formula so by using this three things one is the load angle another one is the excitation emf and terminal voltage the another thing is the reactive power by using these three conditions we can understand how it works how it works so in this we will take the three conditions the first condition is the normal excitation so in normal excitation means so both will be same that is the e cos del equal to v e cos del and v both are the same then cos del value is zero then e value is equal to v e value is equal to e whenever e v both are same e v both are same so if you substitute del value zero e cos del equal to v and then what about this reactive power reactive power is also zero reactive power is also zero here excitation emf both voltages are same magnitude same magnitude okay so here we can write the active power value active power equal v i a cos pi v i a cos pi okay here armature current will become the zero what about a reactive power reactive power is v i a sin pi v i a sin pi also zero because there is no under no load condition you know that the armature current is zero approximately the load current will be the zero so by this the in the normal excitation conditions this will be the same next second case if it is over excited machine over excited machine means we can write e cos del value is greater than v that is we can write not voltage is e is greater than v from this from this here the terminal voltage v and the armature current ia is like this 
so that is e this is e value is high value so from this we can write ia excess the combination of terminal voltage and the drop will give the voltages so from this we can write some statements that is look at the armature current armature current just observe here lags v by 90 degrees v by 90 degrees so whenever armature current lags by 90 degrees we can call it as machine operate at zero power factor lagging operate at zero power factor lagging this is called zero power factor lagging whenever the machine is operated zero power factor lagging the effect of armature reaction is purely demagnetized is pu purely demagnetized so then we can write the reactive power formula q equal to v into ia sin 90 then the load angle and then the power factor angle phi is 90 degrees then we will write here v into ia so then it will become the positive value and what about the power v ia cos pi cos pi means cos 90 then cos 90 value is 0 so the reactive power is the positive reactive power is the positive and the active power will become the zero active power will become the zero from this the reactive power is the positive and the active power will become the zero so for the over excited machine this is the operation of the any machine okay so this is about normal excitation and over excitation of the over excitation of the any mission okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you